You and Joe are the only people I can turn to. Oh, come on, Irene. Now, come on. We've known each other much too long and much too well to play word games. Tell me what it is, and if we can, we'll help you. I'm sorry. I'm not playing games with you. It's just that this is the hardest thing I've ever had to ask anyone. All right. I went to New York for some medical tests. And the news is very poor. I'm, I'm ill. And it's terminal. Are you sure? Are you sure that there is no mistake? None. I may have less than a month to live. Good God. Does Tina know? No. Of course, she'll have to be told as soon as I get home. Oh, why can't I stop this? I promised myself I wouldn't give way. Come on. You're entitled. Well, I'm not crying for myself, I swear. I, I don't think I am. It's Tina. She's never gotten over the loss of her father. And she's so shy. She keeps everything in here. She hardly speaks to anybody. And now she's going to have no one. But, but the problem is, the only relative we have is quite elderly now. Don't you remember how I used to amuse everybody with the silly stories about my Aunt Frances? Yeah, I remember. Well, Aunt Frances is in a nursing home now. That's why I've come to you and Joe. It will help me to die in peace, to know that my daughter is safe with you. I really hate to disappoint you, but uh, I won't be able to stay for lunch. So uh, maybe some other day. Yeah, maybe. Oh, and uh, I do want to tell you that I think it's a fantastic idea having the reception here at Landfair. That is, if Peter agrees. Well, uh, you don't have to show me to the door. Goodbye. I'll show her the way to hell. She's a little monster. What? Edwina, your scheme was absolutely brilliant. Now, what I have there is admission of attempted murder as well as the fact that she never loved Peter. She did all of that just to hurt me. It was an absolute horror story. Oh, you liked my idea after all. What are you going to do with the tape now? Well, you'll see. I'm a little confused, though. Didn't one of you say she was going to have a wedding reception here? There will be no wedding reception. Not when Peter hears this tape. I just had to talk about it to get my when they're going. Your scheme worked so beautifully. And when she has to take back her wedding trousseau, you'll see how well. She was laughing. I actually have her recorded as laughing about the whole thing. Yes, this is Mrs. Lord. Don't you dare put me on hold. I'm one of your best customers, so you take my order right this second. Yes, I have something that I would like you to pick up immediately and deliver to Dr. Jensen at the Land Landview Hospital. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, once Peter hears that tape, that, my dear, will be that. One Life to Live will continue in a moment. staff really pitched in during our recent crisis. <laughs> yes, we did. And I tell you, you know, we, were, we all of us were hoping that it would have been someone from our department who could have just gotten their hands on that Barney Harmon. <laughs> I'm sure they were. Well, welcome back, Dr. Craig. Thank you, Samantha. Oh, one look at that child. Makes a man feel really fine. <laughs> Talk to you later, ladies. Central? No. Onward, onward. <laughs> man that I think can answer my questions. Uh, do you mind if I come in for an oil change and a wheel alignment? <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. 
Lunch is on me. Thank you, Doctor. I think that's terrific. Even though I don't even know what it means. <laughs> so I'm the man to answer all your questions, am I? You're the one. Such as? How soon, Jack? And how much? You aren't thinking of going back to work. Carla, what do you suggest I do with the rest of my life? Yeah, Jim isn't an invalid really because he's had this type of operation, Carla. Jim can play, Jim can work, Jim can be anything except a dull boy. Oh, good. Well, that answers part of it. Now, how soon? A couple of weeks or more. I'll let you know. All right, fine. That's what I came to hear. Thank you. Well, wait a minute, Doctor. Just a minute. That may be what you came to hear. But that isn't all you're going to hear. I mean, I'm a captive audience, is that it? Stop looking around frantically for Nurse Renfrew. She's just starting a sandwich over there, and she'll be five or more minutes before she'll come back and rescue you. Make that ten. She's sitting with a very cute guy. Oh, I see. <laughs> Good. That'll give me a little bit more time to answer that other question of yours, which I believe was how much. Now, it worked. They've been talking about how much work? Yes, that's exactly right, Carla. It's, uh, it's not simple because of the type of man we've got standing, sitting here in front of us, Carla. This man is chief of staff of a very large and busy hospital. And it's not the usual job, not the usual sort, that is, or the normal amount of pressure either. That's for sure. Jim, every day up there in your position there's a crisis. I've only been here a matter of months. And, and every single one of those that I've seen has been a what? Well, what you're saying is I've got to find some way to cut back on the workload. No. I'm saying that you give up administration altogether. Oh, sure. Come on, Jack. Jim, Come on. Jim, listen. It's too much of a hassle for anyone who's never been sick a day in their lives, let alone a man who's got a heart history such as yours. Well, I'm sure I can find some way to handle it. There isn't a person alive who can run this hospital without putting in Lots of overtime. Come on, Jim, you know yourself. You're a workhorse. You love every minute of it. And then there'll always be the constant temptation of yielding to more work. So avoid temptation by retiring. Now, did I say one word about retiring? Well, that's what it comes to, Jim. No, doctor. No. You can continue your professional duties. Furthermore, you can see private patients. That way you moderately keep yourself busy without exhausting yourself. Are you sorry for asking? Carla, if you signal Miss Renfrew, maybe we can do a couple of fast laps around the Indianapolis Speedway. <laughs> Anybody in the world say that she's guilty of murder. 
Miss Hopkins, I have a sense to know right from wrong. I knew what I was doing. I didn't stop myself. I killed him. Becky, just give Joe Riley a chance. You should have seen Richard laying in that hospital bed. He's so pale. I swear I couldn't even see him breathing. They only let me see him just that one time. Well, Johnny, I think they only let relatives see a patient on a regular basis. I don't know what a Richard any relative is. I know that. And pretty soon he's going to be asking for you, and then they can't keep you out. Well, that's why I spent the night outside his room. I was hoping that would happen. Listen, Becky, I know I get put down for this a lot, but you are looking at a woman who only believes in happy endings. Well, I'm glad you do, Miss Hopkins. You know, don't change because of me. Here comes the vibe. Oh, man, you set the day August 1st. <laughs> nice time. You know, I just came from Dorian's, and we're going to have the wedding reception at Land Fair. Well, that is if Peter approves. <laughs> I'm sure he'll approve of anything. Uh, can I make a suggestion? Of course. Did you buy your wedding dress yet? No. Well, I have one. Miss Hopkins made it for me. I know I'm not going to wear it. It's so pretty. It's all covered with lace. Can I give it to you? No, you may not. I made that dress for you, and you're going to wear it the day you get married to Richard. Isn't she, Lynn? She certainly is. But thank you, Becky. I'll tell you, this thought is probably going to be the nicest gift that we get. But that dress is for you. Well, you had us all pretty worried with that business with the terrorists. Um, are you all right now? Yeah, fine. Are you sure? I mean, there, there are no side effects. Here. Good. You know, Brad was uh, was pretty torn up about the whole thing. I, I tried to calm him down once. I told him that if. If you and I could get through the jungle of San Carlos together, well, you sure would come through this. And you did, thank God. Jenny, what's wrong? Nothing. Well, Peter, I, I really have to go. Excuse me. Jenny, in case you forgot, I can be a pretty great listener. Is it Brad? seem to trust me enough to tell me what's going on. He, he won't open up to me. It's like he has some kind of a life that I know nothing about. Oh. Look, I'm sorry. People have problems, right? I think that life could be perfect. Maybe someday I'll have enough faith again to think that. Dr. Jackson? Yes. I hear this. Charming and very accomplished. 
but not quite up to Richard's standard. No. The very wealthy have a certain air about them, a certain style. I just don't get that from you. Where do you think I come from? I'm not really sure, but I have a feeling. You're more a creation of yourself than you are of your parents. That's a very serious accusation, Dorian. That is not an accusation. I mean that as a compliment. I admire you a great deal, Edwina. You're like me. I had a very clear image of where I wanted to be and who I wanted to be. And I went out and got it. what you did today. I'll tell you what I did today. Okay? Yeah, well, nothing much happened today. Oh, I see. Well, that's too bad because nothing really fascinating happened to me either. So, we don't have to talk. We can just, uh... Um... Do we have to talk? Anything wrong? No. I'm just goofing off. I'm not going to finish. Well, as I was driving back from um, having lunch with Sadie, I was feeling pretty good. Because, well, there we were, the two of us, two adult women, talking on the same level, and very honestly. Uh, uh, well is an overrated commodity. It is not. Anyway, I felt a little less lonely after seeing Sadie. <laughs> now on my way over here, it kind of, I don't know, kind of got to me again. I mean, everybody has a partner except for poor little Sam, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a solution for you. What? Clone yourself. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, then I'd have company, wouldn't I? But what if I didn't like myself? Well, that's easy. If you found out that you really were a stinker, and I'm sure you would, and you, and you really didn't like yourself, it would be very simple. You just send a clone over to Tony, make his life miserable. And now you can let Tony see what he's been missing. Yay! Cut it out, you fun boy! <laughs> Richard. 
Peter, if you have any influence, please use it. But first of all, Edwina, that would not be influence. It would be interference. But I've got to see him. You're just going to have to be patient. I mean, you'll be able to see him in a couple of days. Come on, sit down for a couple of minutes. Relax. Hi. Excuse me. A lot of paperwork you have, Peter. Uh, uh, it's just part of the routine here. Well, I recognize this. This? Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. It's uh, from Doyle. Yes, I know. I was with her when she sent it off by messenger. Do you know what it is? No, I don't. Why don't you open it? That's a pretty good idea. It must be pretty important to be delivered by hand. What's this? Looks like a tape. I better leave you, Peter. Looks like you have a lot of work to do this afternoon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lynn. Well, yeah, it's Peter. Are uh, you going to be in your office for a few more minutes? Good. Good. Is it all right if I drop by and use your tape machine for a while? Um. I got a, a tape from Dorian here, sent by messenger, and needless to say, I'm a little curious about it. Yeah. Fine, I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you.